I always wanted to be a writer. I wrote short stories and poetry and three novels, but I never wanted to write a memoir. It felt pointless and painful to share one's life with a mostly thoughtless world. And then came an important event, the death of my father. And the only form that could even begin to contain me was the memoir. This became a book called If I Had to Tell It Again. Ever since its publication in late 2017, several people have told me that writing the memoir was an act of courage. But I disagreed. Why was I being praised for doing my job? For isn't it the job of the artist to speak their emotional truth? More recently, a fellow writer put this into perspective for me. It is not that you told your story to the world, but because you found a way to tell the story to yourself, he said. Most of us never do that. It set me thinking about what this means for my work as an educator. I teach literary studies at a university. As you know, institutional teaching and learning for many of us has become about syllabus, assignments, research, exams, grades, attendance, the methodic counting of hours, semester after semester. We focus so much on content, on what is being taught and learnt, that we often forget there are bodies and minds in the classroom, told and untold stories. I have come to believe that learning and teaching unearths and is formed by emotional truths, just like any other art. Such are my thoughts, and they take the form of a memoir today. This is titled, When a Teacher Walks. When a teacher walks into a classroom, her whole life walks with her. She starts to speak. What can she teach you that a textbook don't? That a video won't? That a library won't? That Google won't? She was once the age of her students, an age when she did not want to be a teacher. Teachers are stagnant, always stared at. She does not like to be stared at. She likes it even less when eyes are not met. When a teacher walks into a classroom, her whole life walks with her. She starts to speak. What can she teach you that a newspaper won't, that study notes won't, that the internet won't, that traveling won't? Teachers are told to unpack a world, their own to stay folded, invisible, because teachers cannot have pass. Teachers cannot be raped. Teachers cannot have abortions. Teachers cannot have lovers. Wait, surely teachers cannot be having sex. Teachers, you see, cannot tell the truth. When you are a girl, you don't think about being a teacher. When you are a girl, you think about being a boy. The grass feels safer on the other side, is it? When you are six and a woman touches you in a different way, coaxes you to touch her, you know you have a sex. You know you are a playground. When there is shame, there is no truth. When you are 10, there isn't even a word for what happened. This folded part of your body has a word. So does that part of his body, different from you. And you, you are difference itself. At 10, a playground for an adult man. Sex is a word. Rape is a word. Not the act, but the words impale her 
when she is 11, sitting in a sex education class by an old nun, body named in fragments, diagrams on the board, this goes into that and that is what had happened to her, a word resplendent in its brutality. Teachers teach words, but are words real? Teachers were once young women desperate to earn the right to pleasure because pleasure has to be earned, because pleasure is guilt, because you teach it, you learn it. There was once a wound, now there is a scar. Teachers cannot have scars. They call it group therapy in the NGO office, all wounded warriors talking in a circle on Saturday afternoons. This one woman never stops knitting, never looks up. Her husband, a doctor, is abusing their little girl. Their marriage is over. She has only one question for other survivors. Now, after all these years, are you normal? Teachers have to be normal. Violence makes a baby. So does pleasure. So does indifference. So does suffering. Semen and egg make a baby. A baby. A childhood. Pure possibility in a world of untruth. How can a teacher tell the truth? Have you heard the sound of sadness dripping like an icicle? Drip, drip, drip. The sound of sadness inside a parent. Drip, drip. You listen to it, you and your parent. A chipped edge and its porcelain cup. Drip. One day the ground beneath your feet evaporates, engulfs, drowns, tornadoes through your brain. You know it is time to go. Lots of people die at 31 before they become teachers. What can a teacher teach you that darkness won't, that bereavement won't, that rejection won't, that a sharp love won't? When a teacher walks into a classroom, she takes her whole life with her. She starts to speak of boats leaning into good winds, of colors trickling through a prism, of desire in the shape of contentment, of belonging to a self. She learns of the line that traces back from the edge of each dark precipice, the line of beauty, the line of hope, the line of persistence, a line that says, if this is not what you want, where you want to be, then take me where you will. Imagination alone redeems. Not the textbook, the diagram, the data, the capsule of information, but their contours. How thoughts make ideas, how ideas make life. You teach it, you learn it. Like being born on a chessboard, someone once said to her, without knowing the rules. It takes a lifetime to figure the moves, a lifetime to make them with grace and kindness. This is cognizance. This is learning too. A teacher carries her chessboard tucked under her arm. At the classroom door, she hesitates. You see, Listening comes before speaking. She cannot speak to filled chairs, pale walls, glazed eyes in a room. Only a ear can invite voice. Only learning can make room for teaching. With playfulness, with honesty, with luminous joy, with generosity, with hunger, with no decoy. No matter what she teaches, what matters, is that she can drape her voice in her own skin. Take away the unfolding chessboard and teachers are brains without bodies. Teachers are words without syntax, strung between a stray comma, an attentive apostrophe, 
a shy hyphen, a meditative bracket, a pensive exclamation, a bleeding semicolon. Present, in the full sense of the word, present, porous, translucent, we make a pact. When a teacher walks into a classroom, her whole life walks with her. She starts to speak. Thank you.